All right, guys, this is the Tank 01 rig demo for Maya. Uh, all these scenes load in Maya 2014 or newer. I'm going to be using Tank 01 DX11 for this demo. So I'm just going to load the textures and it should look something like this. If not, you want to load your preferences and uh, display at the bottom there, rendering engine, make sure that says Direct X11. Okay, I'm going to go through each control. Uh, we have the top node, which we're going to move around and rotate. You can also scale it. And we also have display mesh options here. So this is the game mesh. And you can see that the grouping layout is uh, nice and clean. We have the five pieces that make up the tank. And these same five pieces are in uh, each of the mesh types. So we're going to go to the render mesh. And this is all quads. This is a mesh that you would use to subdivide. And you get a better silhouette slightly. And um, the proxy mesh. And this is purely for animation. There's no UVs on this. It's just, just for animating to keep the uh, viewport clean and uh, play in real time. So we're going to move the uh, drive control. You can move it back and forth and rotate it. And you can see that the, uh, the treads stay in sync with wherever you move it. We also have the hull control, which adds a uh, quite a bit of realism to the way the tank moves. You can add a lot of weight shifting, and it's pretty cool control. We have these side panels and uh, the wheel controls. If we move those up and down, you can see the suspension uh, moving. And all the wheels are set up the same way, exactly the same. Uh, on the flap control, we can control the tread and the wheels separately, or we can just use them together. And we can also control how slack the uh, the tread is, which is really cool. The same controls on the other side, obviously. And we have the um, hatch controls. There's not a lot going on on the inside. There are lights too, which I forgot to mention on the uh, top node control. You can just turn the front lights on. And we also have the rear lights. And you can see that we've got a bounce light that was baked in when I uh, made the emissive maps, which adds a effect. Uh, the wheel controls also have these ground controls and these are set up specifically for uh, terrain mesh. So you'd constrain those to terrain. So if I just create a real quick uh, piece of bumpy terrain, give us some subdivisions, uh, move some points here. You can see if we move the tank through it now, nothing really happens. So we need to grab these controls and geometry constraint them to the terrain. So I'm just going to grab the terrain and uh, one of the controls and the next control and so on. Go through. I'm just going to do the one side. Uh, ideally, you do both sides if you're actually going to use this. And you can use these controls here to move it up in case there's any uh, crashing. All right. So now if I move this back and forth, you can see the, uh, the tank wheels over the uh, contours of the mesh. I'm going to delete that and reset those. Now all of the controls actually have um, selection sets, so it makes it very easy to navigate those. Uh, I'm going to move over to the turret control. You can move this around just like a target to aim your gun. And you can also uh, wiggle the turret if you wanted to create any kind of secondary motion. You can also fire, which is already built in with some recoil. Now this animation is a set driven key animation that also has a um, selection set and you can just adjust the curves if you need to. So that fire animation can be adjusted there or you can just use the power attribute which you can unlock and uh, tweak. I'm just going to crank it up just so you really see the difference. So the uh, the recoil is over exaggerated there. But yeah, you can see how the power affects it. So up to the machine gun, uh, we can move that around just the same way as the turret. It's just a target control. We also have these handle controls, which you can constrain your character's hands to, and a height control that you can adjust depending on the size of your character. Now, when we fire this gun, you see that the uh, bullet chain moves inside, and the hammer strikes, and also the shell casings fly out the side, which is really cool when you see it all moving together with the recoil. Now you can control these shell casings by using this arrow. So I can move it around. 
just going to move it to the left and uh, you'll see when I fire it these shell casings fall out to the left side. Now these shell casings bounce on the side of the tank. So if you uh, look closely here, you can see as they fly out, they're just hitting the side of the hull there. Now you can control these uh, bounces very, very easily. If I turn on the main trajectory attribute, I can uh, control these bounce points and move these controls around to uh, determine where my shell casings are going to fly. You can see here now they're bouncing out on the front. So we reset these and you can take it even further if you want. There is a sub trajectory attribute that you can turn on and it shows the path of all three of the connected shell cases. So there's only three that you actually see at one time. They just loop and they're all joint animation that plays on a curve. So there's no particles involved, no particle caches or anything. You don't need any of that stuff. It's just all skeleton animation. So it will transfer into game engines very well. We can also uh, turn them off individually if we need to. And that doesn't affect visibility. All that's doing is it's snapping the joint into the inside of the gun here. So if I turn that off, you'll see them appear. We can also rotate those shell casings if need be as well. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the skeleton and I'll show you those uh, shell casings. There's three of them and they just get recycled. So they're always stored inside the machine gun until they're used and they just fly out. So you only ever see three on screen at one time. Okay, so I'm going to do a very um, crude and fast animation just to show you the export um, procedure, what you would do. I'm just going to use the proxy mesh just so it moves a little easier. I'm just going to drive the tank <clears throat> and key it. There you go. And fire the gun. Let's just key that. And I'll move the machine gun to just key that. And of course, we're going to fire the gun as well. So we can see those shell casings. Okay, so let's play that. Drive, fire, cue machine gun. Bang, bang. There we go. If we go back to game mesh, you can see the animation plays exactly the same way. And we're going to be focusing primarily on just the game mesh and uh, the root joint. These are the only things that we want to export, so these are the only things that we need to do things to. So we're going to bake the root joint. Make sure that you have below options selected because you want to select every joint below that in the hierarchy. So as we bake that, you can see the animation playing slowly there. The shells, now that's baked, and all we need to do is grab the geometry that we want and the uh, root joint, move it out of the rig and delete it. And there we go, now we're ready to export. So all you see there is just joint animation playing. So we'll see those joints again. You can see what's what's going on. Drive, fire, and then we'll see the machine gun shells flying out. It's that simple. And all you do is just select your pieces and export. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, thanks for watching.